In this lesson, we are going to simplify radical expressions. Since radicals are really fractional exponents, all exponential rules apply to radicals as well. Here they are. Product of two radicals of the same degree is a radical of a product. So this property works both ways. From the product of radicals to radical of a product and the other way around, we can separate the radical of nth degree into a product of radicals of each factor. This is because of the exponential rule that AB raised to certain exponent, in this case 1 over n, can be written as a to this exponent and b to this exponent. Similarly, a quotient of radicals of the same degree is the radical of a quotient. Again, this rule comes directly from the quotient rule for powers. a over b to certain exponent, in this case 1 over n, is the same as the numerator to 1 over n over the denominator to 1 over n. So any radical can be split over multiplication and over division. However, we can't split a radical over addition or subtraction. So nth degree radical of a plus b, it's not the same as nth degree radical of a plus nth degree radical of b, neither with the minus. Particularly, square root of a square plus or minus b square, it's not equal a plus or minus b. This is a common mistake that students do. So please remember we can't really reduce the index of the radical with the exponent if there is addition or subtraction inside the radicand. There is no such rule. For example, if a and b are 1, we can see clearly that these two sides are not equal. The left hand side would be 1 square plus 1 square, so it's 2 while the right-hand side would be just 1 plus 1, so 2. Obviously, root 2 is not equal to 2. OK, how to simplify a radical with positive variables? The assumption of positive variables is just for the sake of not worrying about applying absolute value in the end. So, let's assume that all variables are positive and just concentrate on simplifying radicals of different expressions. So, if we want to simplify this square root of 160, x to the 6 and y to the 11, first we may want to think of factoring the radicand completely. So, to factor, for example, 160, we can use a factor tree. Let's do it on the side. We could split 160 into 16 and 10. And then 16 is the same as 2 to the 4, and 10 can be split even farther into 2 times 5. So altogether we have 2 to the 5 times 5. OK, so that's how we split 160. Now x to the 6 and y to the 11, this is already in a factored form, so there is nothing else we need to do here. The next step would be to take out of the radical appropriate power of each factor. What does it mean? For example, if we see this 2 to the 5, we can perform division on exponential level. 5 divided by this invisible index 2. 5 divided by 2 is 2 remainder 1. So we write 2 to the exponent 2, that's the quotient from the division, outside of the radical. What about the remainder? The remainder is 1, that needs to stay under the radical, so 2 to the 1 is still written under the radical sign. Next, we have single 5 to the exponent 1, so there is nothing we can pull out of the radical sign. 5 still stays. The following factor, x to the 6. Again, let's perform this division on exponential level. 6 divided by 2 is 3, so we're pulling x to the 3 outside of the radical and nothing is left over. Next, we have y to the 11. Again, we can perform this division on the side. 11 divided by 2 is 5 remainder 1. So fifth power of y will be written in front of the radical and the remainder 1 means that the first power of y stays under. That is the easiest method of simplifying radicals. Again, 
factor everything completely and then perform division on exponential level. So take the exponent, divide by the index of the radical and the quotient of this division goes out of the radical as an exponent. However, the remainder, that's the exponent that stays under the radical. OK, let's use this method to simplify following radicals. Again, we are going to assume that all variables are positive, so we don't have to worry whether or not to use absolute value in the end. Cubic radical of negative 2 to the 6, x to the 9, y to the 21. Any odd degree radical of a negative number results in a negative answer. So let's record this negative, and then we don't have to think about it anymore. Next factor, 2 to the 6. To find out how much we can take out of the radical, we divide on exponential level. So 6 divided by 3 is 2. Therefore, we can pull out 2 to the 2. And there is no remainder, so nothing is left over out of this power of 2. Next, x to the 9. So let's divide 9 by 3. That's 3. So we can take x to the third power out of the radical. And finally, y to the 21. Again, 21 divided by 3 is 7. So y to the 7 goes out. And there is actually nothing under the radical. So the whole radical is gone. And we have a nice final answer. Obviously, this could be written as negative 4x cubed y7. In the next example, let's try the fourth degree radical. Again, we are going to perform division on exponential level. So 5 divided by 4 is 1 remainder 1, which means 3 to the 1 goes out of the radical. And I'm going to write this fourth degree radical a little bit farther apart because I predict that we can pull out a little bit more here. Okay, from this division 5 by 4, the quotient is 1 and the remainder is 1. So 3 to the 1 still stays under the radical sign. Next, a to the 14. We are asking ourselves how many times 4 goes into 14. Well, it goes 3 times, making it 12, and 2 is left over. So 3 is the quotient, therefore a to the 3 goes out of the radical, and 2 is the remainder, so a square stays under the radical sign. Finally, b to the 7. How many times 4 goes into 7? Once. So b to the 1 goes out of the radical, and since we have remainder 3, b cubed stays under the radical sign. And our expression is simplified. Let's look at the next example. This time we have a radical of a quotient. Also, there is a minus in front of it. So let's copy this minus, and we are going to split the radical over the numerator and denominator. Okay. In the meantime, we can factor the 75 into 3 times 25. So we can write 25 times 3 like this, or we could write 5 squared times 3. That's up to you. Since a root can be split over multiplication as well, this time we can think of it like this. A root of 25, since 25 is a perfect square number that's easy to calculate, this is just 5, and root of 3 has to stay. We still carry on the minus, over, and then since we have a to the 8, let's perform division on exponential level. 8 divided by 2 is 4. So a to the 4 goes out of the radical and we don't have anything under. So that's all what we can do here. Next, we have a product of 2x and cubic radical of some quotient. OK, so we expect that our final answer will be a quotient as well. Let's draw the division bar. 2x is our numerator, so let's copy it. And then we have cubic root of 64. Well, that's the same as cubic root of and 64 is a perfect cube number, isn't it? That's 4 cube. Okay, that's a good preparation for simplifying the root in the next step. In the bottom, though, we have cubic root of x to the 10. Okay, let's carry on. 2x, and now this cubic root cancels the cube, so we just have 4 over. Let's make division on exponential level. 10 divided by 3 is 3 remainder 1. So x to the 3 goes out 
and cubic root of 1x that it's under. Okay, now what we can do is reduce 1x from the top and from the bottom. So this x with 1x here, what's left is 2x's in the bottom. Okay, we could also multiply 2 times 4, which is 8. And in the denominator, we have x squared cubic root of x. That will be our final answer. Let's see the following example. Fourth degree root from x squared. Well, here we can't really take anything out of the radical because the exponent is lower than the index of the radical. However, we could rewrite this in exponential form. That will be x to the two quarters. And then we can simplify two quarters to one half. But x to the one half, that's the same as square root of x. So we could still simplify this root. And finally, 10th degree root from 32. It's a good idea to recall that 32 is a power of 2. Which power of 2 is that? 2 to the... 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16 times 2 is 32. So 2 to the 5. Again, we can't pull anything out of this radical. However, we could rewrite this in exponential form, 2 to the 5 tenths, and then make the reduction of this fractional exponent. So it's 2 to the 1 half again, which is square root of 2. A lot nicer expression. Notice that the last two examples suggest the following rule. See, it was 4 and 2. We basically reduced 4 and 2 by 2, and we end up with 2 and 1. 1 half, right? Similarly here, we had 10 and 5, we reduced it, and we end up with 2 and 1, because of this reduction of fractions. So generally, we could record this rule like this. If the index of the radical and the exponent of our radicand have exactly the same factor, in this case it's called k, we could actually reduce this k and end up with nth degree radical from a to the m only. In the following example, we need to multiply and simplify. Again, we are assuming that all variables are positive. So, now we use the rule that the product of radicals is the radical of the product. Okay, so I could write 8x times 6x cubed, but it would be nicer if we'll combine powers with the same basis. So, since 8 is the same as 2 to the 3, and 6 is the same as 2 times 3, I could combine these two powers of 2, 2 to the 3 and 2 to the 1, and write 2 to the 4, and then times 3, and finally x to the 1 times x cubed is x to the 4. Okay, after this preparation, it's a lot easier to simplify. We are performing this division on exponential level, so we can take 2 to the 4 divided by 2 is 2. The 3 has to stay under the root, no change here, but x to the 4 can be pulled out as x squared in front of the root. In the end, we could rewrite this answer in a little bit nicer form as 4 root 3 and then x squared because customary would like to indicate the numerical coefficient in front of the variable. So, that's our product. Let's see the following example. Cubic root of 3x times cubic root of 9x to the 4. Since the indexes of the root are the same, we could rewrite this product as a single cubic root of 3x times 9x to the 4. But then let's combine powers of the same basis. So we really have cubic root of 3 times 9, which is another 3 times 3. So we have 3 to the 3 and x to the 5. Okay, now let's simplify this. We can pull 1 3 out because 3 divided by 3 is 1. Okay, and x to the, the index of the radical 3 goes into 5 once. So 1x goes out and the remainder is 2. Therefore, x squared remains under the root. Here it is. Great, so that's how we multiply radicals with the same indexes. But the next two examples 
asks us to multiply radicals with different indexes. If the radicals are of different degrees, the only way to multiply them is to go through the exponential form first. So root 2 is the same as 2 to the 1 half. Then cubic root of 2 is the same as 2 to the 1 third. And in order to multiply them, we keep the same base and we add those two exponents. So it will be 6 and it's 3 plus 2, right? So it's 2 to the 5 sixes. Now we perform this multiplication of powers, but we need to go back to the radical form. So this will be equal 6 degree radical from 2 to the 5. And there's actually nothing that we can pull out of the radical, so that's the final answer. And finally, the last example. Again, we are rewriting everything in a power form. So the first radical can be written as a to the 2 thirds times the second one is a to the 3 fifths, right? And then we perform addition on exponential level. So it's a to the common denominator 15. This fraction needs to be multiplied by 5, top and the bottom, and that one by 3, top and the bottom. So overall, in the numerator, we have 10 plus 9. Altogether, a to the 19th fifteenths, which translates into 15th degree root from a to the 19th. Since this 19th is higher than 15th, we can actually pull some a's out of the radical, and that's what we should do for the final answer, right? So 15 goes into 19 once, therefore we can pull 1a out. How many under? Since the remainder from this division is 4, then a to the 4 stays under. Here we go. So that's how we multiply radicals with different indexes.